My name is Mira Binder. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow, and today I want to introduce you to our work that got recently published in Human Mutation with the title A New Workflow for Whole Genome Sequencing of Single Human Cells. The work was performed at the research lab of the Department of Pediatric Oncology, Hematology, and Clinical Immunology at the University of Düsseldorf under the direction of Professor Ant Borchardt. The project was conceptualized and performed in tight collaboration with Professor Nicholas Stecklein from the Department of General, Visceral and Pediatric Surgery at the University of Düsseldorf and Christoph Bartenhagen from the Institute of Medical Informatics at the University of Münster. Single cell analysis became tremendously important in many fields. In cancer research, we know that solid tumors and leukemias are heterogeneous and that the analysis of genetic heterogeneity among single cancer cells is key to understand cancer evolution. The unbiased amplification of the whole genome of single cells is very challenging though, due to the high complexity of the human genome. With the development of second generation sequencing, the bias of whole genome amplification methods could be analyzed in a comprehensive manner. Neville et al. described the first analysis of single human cells by next generation sequencing after using a PCR-based amplification method in 2011. Other interesting methods for whole genome amplification are multiple displacement amplification, short MDA, and multiple annealing and looping-based amplification cycles, short MALVAC. In our paper, we present a new workflow combining an efficient whole genome amplification method with second generation sequencing. The described whole genome amplification method combines enzymatic genomic digest with MSV1 and subsequent adapter linker PCR. MSV1 recognizes a motif of four bases which are highly abundant throughout the genome. By comparing our single cell sequencing results with data obtained from sequencing pooled genomic DNA, without pre-amplification, and by comparing single cell sequencing results to array CGH analyses, as well as by direct comparison to other whole genome amplification methods, we extensively analyzed our approach. Our amplification method recovered up to 74% of the human genome. Copy number variance and loss of heterozygosity detected in single cell genomes showed concordance of up to 99% to pooled genomic DNA. Sequencing with paired end reads allowed genome-wide analyses of structural and qualitative variants, like translocations, inversions, insertions, or deletions. For the detection of structural variants, we detected a higher false positive rate, though, compared to the detection of copy number variants. Potential reasons could be whole genome amplification method dependent, and independent and are extensively discussed in our paper. One reason specific to our whole genome amplification method could be the generation of DNA chimeras in the adapter ligation step during whole genome amplification. In our approach, these chimeras would be supposedly generated at MSE1 restriction sites in the genome. We therefore analyzed the number of structural variants located at MSE1 sites and observed a high prevalence for MSC1 chimeras of up to 86% for some variants. This additional type of analysis provides a very good tool for quality control of paired end sequencing data generated by our workflow. Taken together, we developed an effective and robust single cell sequencing workflow based on adaptive linker PCR combined with second generation sequencing, which allows analysis at single nucleotide resolution. High coverage, uniformity, and low allele dropout rate make our methods sufficient for comprehensive SNP and copy number analysis. The described workflow should be most suitable to analyze cancer cell heterogeneity and clonality. And with this, I want to thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions or suggestions regarding our work, please email our corresponding author, Nicholas Stöcklein, or me. Please find our emails below or in the paper. I hope this short introduction made you curious about our work and I wish you a happy reading.